Howdy, it's Tubal Kane, and today I'm going to make a little project, and I'm going to call it the uh, Wiggler Widget. And this is what it looks like. <clears throat> it's nothing more than a little piece of aluminum that I've uh, turned concentric steps on of different diameters. And we've got a reamed hole here of uh, 3 8 that will hold either a Wiggler or... A 3 8 uh, edge finder. Now some edge finders are half inch but this one is 3 8 and it can be held in there with this set screw and used on the Bridgeport mill and now let's step over to the Bridgeport and I'll show you why I might use this on a wiggler or edge finder. There will be many times on your Bridgeport mill when you need to change tooling and uh, then stop, possibly take this tool out and put your uh, wiggler or your edge finder in there and, and uh, quite often the uh, collet size that you're using for the tool up here is different than the collet size that you will need for your edge finder. So the purpose of this is to have various steps here for your common collet sizes that will allow you to quickly remove whatever tool you had in there and uh, without changing the collet quickly put uh, the widget in there tighten the collet and it's ready to go that's the purpose of this now you could put as many steps on here as you want or whatever uh, sizes you want but I have put on a quarter inch, three eighths, one half, five eighths, and three quarter. And the very largest uh, step here is just an undetermined size. It is a, a place to put the set screw and uh, acts as a shoulder for that last uh, three quarter inch step. But you can make this longer or shorter or whatever other sizes you want. And they might be sixteenths, but I've stuck to uh, the more common eighth inch uh, uh, increments on there. Now the set screw serves two purposes. It holds the uh, edge finder in there or the wiggler and it will hold the uh, raw stock to a mandrel while you're turning it on the lathe. So let's step over to the lathes and uh, watch the different operations that I'm performing and the order of the operations and why I'm uh, making these various cuts. Now there will be a tolerance here. You'd like to get these right on and this is a good turning exercise for you beginners. This could be made of aluminum or steel. Mine is aluminum. But you can certainly be one, two, three thousandths over or under and it's still going to uh, fit into the collet. Probably not going over because it's so easy to take it down a few thousandths. But it, should you go under uh, several thousandths on any one of these, rather than scrap it, you can probably live with that and the collet will constrict and still hold that diameter. I'm going to start by reaming this hole five-eighths of an inch deep. Now the hole has to be a blind hole. It cannot go all the way through because at some point here the hole will exceed the size of these end pieces and they would break off. So the hole is actually uh, approximately that deep. It could go a little bit deeper but certainly not into these last two steps. And that's three eighths because the shanks are three eighths. You could make it half inch if you got a half inch uh, wiggler or a edge finder, but these are only five or six dollars. I'm at the Atlas lathe now. My workpiece is uh, seven eighths diameter aluminum, inch and a quarter long, and I've already faced both ends. Now uh, you can start with larger stock, uh, one inch stock but probably no smaller than 7 eighths unless you're changing the design a little bit. And I'm just going to put it in the three jaw chuck, tighten it down, and center drill it. Then uh, this is 1 64th under 3 eighths and I will use a 3 eighths chucking reamer and uh, ream it. I've already marked the drill. Sometimes I like to do this. I put a, a Sharpie marker uh, on the drill. And you can use the quill on your tail sock. There's different ways of, of determining the depth, but I, I like to do that. Now I'm 
reaming three eighths. Sometimes it's advantageous to uh, stop the lathe and blow the hole out and uh, run the reamer in there again because the chips do pack up at the bottom of the hole. If you're new at lathe work, make two of them while you got the setup. You know what I mean. Deburr your hole. Now I'm going to put a set screw there and that's eighth of an inch up from the bottom and I've center punched it and I'm going to make that an 832 and for 832 I like to drill it uh, number 29 so I'll drill and tap it off camera and then I'll run the reamer back through there by hand uh, to uh, remove that drill burr from the cross hole. Now I'm going to tap it, 832, that's a pretty small set screw. Matter of fact, I just dropped that set screw, I probably never will find it. At my age, I don't even look for them when they're on the floor, I just go to the drawer and grab another one. Don't break that tap off. Now this is the most important thing uh, that I'm going to tell you for the whole project. We're going to turn this on a mandrel, a homemade mandrel. So this is half inch stock that I have turned down to exactly three eighths of sufficient length to go into the hole. And uh, I've turned that down and I've left it in the lathe. It is perfectly concentric with the spindle of the machine it doesn't matter how far off your three jaw chuck is. Now if you got a collar detachment on your machine and it's very accurate uh, just a piece of 3 8 stock will be sufficient for your mandrel but I like to turn the mandrel and then leave it in the chuck until the job is done and I file just a little bit of a flat spot on there for the set screw so the work won't spin. If you make this project, it sure makes it easier if you have a carriage stop. And here's how I like to do it. I've got uh, the tool up against the work right now. And uh, the first step here, the quarter inch diameter is also quarter inch long. So notice that I have a quarter inch uh, uh, tool bit in there for my spacer. And the other steps are 3 16 so I will use a 3 16 tool bit for the other step. So I always got a stop and I'm working up to the stop. And you can use layout lines, but I prefer this method. I'm using the Aloris tool post with a high speed steel tool uh, mounted in, in this holder. Here's a bit of trivia for you. How many of you out there knew that the name Aloris was derived from? the man who invented it and patented it in 1961 by the name of Frank Sorolla. That's Aloris backwards, kind of like Count Alucard and Dracula. Now I'm ready to start cutting and the tool is up against the work and that uh, uh, carriage stop is set as I just told you and I got my micrometer handy and I've got all the dimensions here on a little scratch paper in front of me. And uh, the first diameter again is 250 thousandths, and it is 250 thousandths long. Right up to the stop. And repeated cuts until I'm down to diameter. Now when I approach the final diameter, I will approach it slowly and take many readings. You need to take that care when you're uh, uh, turning a piece like this so you don't ruin it. You need to get those curly chips off of there and then I'll start using a little cutting fluid when I start carrying about the uh, surface finish. Now some of you may rather take a cut all the way across the work to achieve that first diameter of three-quarter, but I'm going to take it 
one step at a time. And this is the final pass. And I'm just feeding by hand and the uh, spindle speed is about 700. And there I am within a half a thousandth and the first step is done. This will be the second step. It's 3 8 diameter. That's 0.375 and that's 3 sixteenths wide. for this step. Yeah, right on there to 375 is what I want, so that one's right on. And now I'll do several steps off, off camera. Next I'm turning the final step which is three quarters diameter. I like this micrometer for demonstrations. Pretty much right on for that. Now I'm going to take a very light pass across the remaining step, uh, which does not matter at all. I'm just going to clean it up. I'm going to break all the corners with a tiny little file. Remember, you absolutely do not want to take this off the little arbor until it is completed. Actually, it's kind of a pretty geometric shape, is it not? Now, here's the living blueprint, should anyone want to make one. There's your diameters. You can change them to decimals. And remember, as far as the lengths are concerned, the small one was quarter inch long, and all the other steps are 3 sixteenths long. And that set screw was an 832. And uh, the hole here is 3 eighths. Actually, that's, that's the first one I made. This is the one I just finished. You know, various tool companies use that same uh, uh, idea, principle here. This is the zero it indicator holder for a bridge port. And there's three different uh, steps here, so it can be held in different collets. So that's a good idea that can be incorporated into various projects. That moves in and out. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the uh, Wiggler widget. And you can uh, put your $6 edge finder in there and uh, 
dedicate it to that that job. There we go. Snug that down. Doesn't have to be very tight. Remember you have just a little tolerance in here. Two or three under or two or three over. And you still got a good usable project. So have fun making one of those. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.